14, we want to get straight into the word. Amen. Straight into the word. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm glad you got your dance. I don't know if you're going to dance off of this or what. It just depends on how you receive it. Look at your neighbor and say, it just depends on how you receive it. Amen. 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 It's all about how you receive it. Amen. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 14. Amen. Um, and I want to read. Uh, I want to start at verse 14. Genesis 14, verse 14. Genesis 14 and 14. If you have trouble finding Genesis, Amen. Amen. You need to come on to the altar right now. Amen. And repent. Uh, hallelujah. It's the first book of the Bible. Hallelujah. And we, uh, something we do here at the Power Church, I feel like uh, if we can stand for the president. Amen. This is the Lord's word. Amen. He is the king of kings. He is the president of every president. So here at the Power Church, when we read our scripture, we reverence the word. We all stand for the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. All right. 14 and 14. And the Bible says, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued unto them. And divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And watch this, he brought back all the goods. Look at your neighbor say, we're going to get it all back. Also brought again his brother Lot and all his goods, the woman also the people. The king of Sodom went up to meet him after the return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer, no more. And of the kings that were with him, that was a big word, at the valley of Sheba, which is the kings there. And Melchizedek, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Bless the Abram, Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave tithes to all. All right. Now watch what happens in verse 20. And he blessed, and blessed be the most high God, which delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And because he realized that God was the one that delivered the enemy into his hand, he gave what? Tithe of all. Look at somebody and say, I got to give it to him. I got to give it to him. I got to give it. Just somebody shout and say, give. That's a, that's a, that's a word we're afraid of. We want to take. But come on, somebody shout, make the devil lie and say, we're going to give. Take a seat in the presence of the Lord. Take a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I would ask before I preach, uh, you know, if you have anything you need to do, try to do it. Get it out the way. Amen. Because I don't want any distractions while I'm preaching. Amen. amen. And the church said amen. amen. All right. All right. All right. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want you I want you to pay attention to something that is quite startling in our generation. Unlike our generation of uh, the before generation who went through what they went through, uh, so their children would not have to go through what they went to. They were willing to sacrifice whatever it cost to make sure the, gender, the next generation had a better life than them. And so now we're living in an age now where the parent will look wonderful and be looking like uh, Ebony Fashion Fair while their children look like five miles of unpaved road. We're living in a time now where parents are even in competition with their child, wanting to live back the years of yesterday that will never return. And so it's hard to even walk through the mall and distinguish the parent from the child because now you have 40-year-olds and 37-year-olds who are suffering from midlife crisis and they're threatened by a 15 and a 16-year-old. And instead of being concerned about building and imparting into them the keys of life, they would rather be in competition. And God says on tonight that even when you prosper, you ought to just not prosper for you, but you ought to be prospering so that another generation might be able to come behind you. Uh, that I may even remind some parents tonight that you ought to make an investment in your child. That every now and then you actually have to attend a PTA meeting. That you, have to, that you actually have to watch test scores and don't wait for your child to get left back. Uh, if you don't make an investment in your child, I don't know who will. And so now, even in schools, you got teachers in schools who are playing two roles. They're playing the teacher and the parents because the parents are not doing their job. 
But if we would raise up a generation of parents, I wish I had a church tonight, who would stop trying to be their children and understand that you were not created to be your child's friend, that you were created to be their peer, that you were supposed to stand even in a level of excellence. And so, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so what your child doesn't like you, they're not supposed to like you, they're just supposed to respect you. I wish I had somebody that would roll with me here. And even, and even, uh, understand, uh, as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. There has to be some level of excellence and expectation of your children. And so, when you watch what happens in Genesis chapter 14, and read it when you get home, 12 through 24, Abraham's nephew, Lot, has just been captured by enemy forces. And you will notice in this text that something strange takes place. His nephew, Lot, has been captured as well as all of his possessions. And I like Abraham because Abraham makes up his mind, or Abram in this text, at the time of this text, makes up his mind that even though, even though this is not my biological child, even though he is not the fruit of my uh, of my womb, he is the child of my community. And because he is a child of my community, I have an obligation and a moral responsibility to fight until no child is left behind. I hope I can help somebody in here tonight. Isn't it strange that you hear all these politicians talking about prosperity? They're talking about wealth. They're talking about the economy. But I want to know who's going to talk about the prosperity of our children's mind I, I want to talk I want to know who's going to talk about the wealth of our children's spirit uh, it's crazy when you look at the times that we live in now and, and, and you look at things happening to our 14 and our 15 year old women they're being raped by adult men and nobody ain't saying nothing about it and seemingly we just go around and allow business to be business as usual and with the mindset that children will just be children so we're allowing uh, people to put them on all types of medicine just to keep them calm the devil is a liar children need a parent that's going to say I'm going to fight for you even if you're not my biological child when, when will we take the time to pause and even make a statement that our children are a priority that even if they're not under the roof of our house I'm still going to look out for them see I come from the old school who come from the old school in here come on all the old school don't be ashamed come on we proud of it come on I come from the old school and in the old school you couldn't even mess up in the streets but because we before you got home, somebody was already calling your house, telling your mama and your daddy what you had already did. And you got the shock of your life when you got in the house because you thought you got away with it. But they already told on you. But now we're living in an age where parents are afraid of their own children. And, and grandparents won't even go outside of the house. And we got to get back to even raising a standard of excellence and let our children know that you just won't respect me, but you're going to respect Adults. I know I won't get too much amen on that. All right. That in fact you will have to have some discipline. That you're not going to say everything that you feel like saying. That you're not going to move every way you feel like moving. That you're not going to throw tantrums when you feel like throw. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Right? We got to teach some of our kids some discipline. I know we live in the day now where we feel like children need a time to express themselves. But I came up under the old school uh, when you were asked not to talk, you just didn't talk. And your mama and daddy didn't even owe you an explanation for why they did not allow you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. There, there was a time when we were growing up, come on Pastor Allen, that they would excuse you from the room because they said this is grown folk. Come on now. Come. Mama would let you know this is grown folk business and this business don't even pertain to you. And, and, but now, but now, but now the parents are cussing in front of their child. They're crying in front of their child about bad relationships. And I want you to know I want you to know there's some stuff you should keep from the foresight of your child. I don't know what's wrong with you. Don't you understand that you are a model before your child what supernatural success looks like. Look at your neighbor. Y'all ain't gonna roll with me tonight. I roll by myself. Look at your neighbor on your roll. Say, be a role model of supernatural success. What do I mean by supernatural?
supernatural success. Here's what I mean. I know, I know, and I know that sometimes you get stressed out. I know sometimes you're frustrated, and I know sometimes you're mad and you're tired, but you find yourself in those situations, and even in those times, you need to go in your room and shut the door. And then when you come back out, start prophesying and say, greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that is in the world. No weapon that's formed against me. If God be for me, who shall be against me? And Abraham, watch this. He gets get, he's going now to get to get to get uh to get light and to get his son and to get his possession. And so Abraham goes into a fight. And you will notice that he didn't fight by himself, according to the text. But the text says, Pastor Smart, he got 318 men. I just wonder what would happen. What would happen if children would see men fighting for them? It is unnerving to even notice in public schools, check it out, notice in public schools that the only man in the building is always teaching PE or he is even just a janitor. But I want to know, are there not men that would take time to educate our children so that their first encounter with a man is not a police? The first encounter with a man is not a lawyer. The first encounter with a man is not a parole officer. If we could even get the men in church to even understand that I got a response responsibility because somebody made an investment in me. Ah, it goes like this. I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. Had me on that mind. Maybe nobody ain't prayed for you, but I I'm a victim of prayer because that should not even be alive right now. But because somebody was praying for me, even though I didn't even know they were praying, but their prayers covered me through my crazy time. Come on, touch somebody. Say, I ain't always been there. I ain't even, come on, I'm just halfway crazy now. I used to be all the way crazy. But if somebody had not invested prayer, somebody was on their knee crying out my name and it covered me till I got my, see, y'all ain't appreciative tonight. But I need about five people that are Christians that understand that the enemy could have took me a while ago. But because somebody invested prayer in my life, you ought to shout and say, somebody pray for me. Come on, I ain't silly. I ain't stupid. I ain't naive either. But if it had not been for somebody praying, I would not have made it. So is there anybody that should just shout unto God that they can say, Lord, I'm so grateful that you laid it on somebody that you let it with my grandmama, my mama, my, even if it was just for, I'm so bad. You put me on that heart and they prayed for me. I, and they made an investment in me. And if, if the men, if the men, somebody shout me. <laughs> We use the energy and, and focus and discipline to help. Watch this. Discipline to help with the child without trying to holler and get with the mama. <laughs> then the children, oh, that just went over y'all. Then the children would even understand that you don't have to be a pretend uncle, but you can be a real, genuine brother from the church who is concerned about our children and actually making a difference. I wish I had some real building, real men in the building that even understand that if men assume their responsibility in the church that the children would even be in a better place and so here it is even in our text that after the battle that Abraham comes into this text and after the battle is over he comes into this priest I'm almost done tonight look at your neighbor say ain't gonna be a long one tonight but he runs into this priest by the name of King Melchizedek and King Melchizedek the word Melchizedek translates to be king of righteousness and it's very interesting it's very interesting because he just got back what he would call even though he was not son he treated him like it was his son he just got back his son he just got uh, back his possession that the enemy had stolen look at your neighbor and say if you pursue you can get it back uh, see there's some people in here that the enemy will take stuff from them watch this and they will say well if, you know if it be the Lord's will then I get it back but sometimes it is the Lord's will but the Lord's will will manifest until you get your happy hips up and pursue some stuff. And I'm not just talking about possession, but I'm talking about sometimes you got to pursue and fight for people. Oh my God. I'm talking about sometimes 
time you got to fight for the people that made you mad. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Somebody dealing with a son that made them mad and you're going to have to fight for them that the devil will get their hands off their mind and that God will take control of their life. Look at your neighbor and say, don't just fight for your possessions because some of you fight for your car quicker than you fight for your child. Some of you, oh, y'all don't like what I'm saying. Some of you fight for your jewelry. You'll fight for stuff and stuff gets stolen, but you won't fight for your spouse. The devil is a liar. You got to put people as a priority over, y'all ain't in here tonight, over your possessions. Look at somebody on your rope. Say, I don't care how mad you make me, I'm going to fight for you. Y'all afraid to say it because you're all emotional. You're a product of your emotions. But whenever you get the love of Jesus Christ, on the inside of you no matter how mad I can see right past that devil and understand that it is a demon working behind the scenes and I can overlook you and go right to that spirit and call the spirit out uh, you got to fight I'm looking at about five people that wouldn't have made it this far if they had not put up a fight uh, is there anybody let me just see if I'm in the right church tonight is there anybody that says I've been fighting a while and I'm still fighting Oh, because I believe the battle The battle, the battle, the battle Belongs to the Lord But sometimes he just wants to see if you want to step up to the plate And be ready to do whatever He said, look at your neighbor Say, you're going to get it back if you will fight Oh my God, how we fight I'm going to fight in my worship I'm going to fight in my praise I'm going to fight in my prayer I'm going to get on my knees And I'm going to cry out to God Even if they hear me all through the house I don't care how crazy they think I am. But when they see the results, they're going to be asking me to pray for them. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. One thing about people, when they make fun of you, but then they see results, the respect level changes. Shake somebody's hand and say, keep doing what you're doing. Because uh, they're going to see the results. They're going to see the manifestation. They're going to be asking you, how did you get where you got to? How did you get your son out of jail? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Oh my God. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to fight and get risen. I wish I had about five people that understand the kingdom of suffering. But the violent take it by force. Y'all come in here too easy and just too laid back. And, and you know, it just happened. And I'm just going, and you just receive it and you say it verbally what you receive. I want to see some fighters. I, I want to see some people that still got on their warrior outfit that said when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up. If anybody you should get mad at, stop getting mad at people and get mad at the devil and fight in the spirit of somebody. I mean, go here tonight. But look at somebody say you are about to get it all back. But it may call for a y'all a spirit of here. It may call for a fight. This is why you got to get back to speaking in tongues. This is why you got to get back to communing with God. This is why you got to get back and get your shot back and get your praise back. Look at somebody and say, if you want to really fight and have some victory, you got to go hard in the spirit. Look at somebody and say, go hard or go home, but don't waste my time because we're trying to get something from the... Is there anybody that's trying to get something from the Lord? Just do your hand like this and say, I can't get it. That's the Lord. It's very interesting that you can throw dirt on the ground and it will just lay on the ground. You can throw metal on the ground and it will just lay on the ground. But you can throw a basketball on the ground and it will actually bounce back up to you. And the reason that it will bounce back and the other two objects that I named will never bounce back is because what it's made of. Look at somebody and say, I knew it was something different about you. I knew there's a reason why you haven't told me yet. I knew there's a reason why you haven't given up the town. Why you haven't thrown the town. I knew there's a reason why you haven't faded yet. Because you're made out of different materials. I wish somebody would shout and say, I see a bounce back spirit. When the devil tries to throw you down, you just bounce right back. When I look at your neighbor, I say, you ain't even got no choice. The bounce is on me. I wish I had about five more people. That to me, there's a bounce on them. And even when the enemy tries to step on you, he just causes you to go high. Look at your neighbor and say, my bounce. And I ain't talking about a dance. I'm talking about a comeback in the spirit. My bounce is so great that every time I go down, Because I 
hit me. It ain't cause I ain't never been thrown down to the ground. And some of y'all been violently thrown down to the ground. Tell the truth, shame the devil. And I should have stayed there. But the spirit of bounce is on me. Would you shake somebody and say, after all you've been through. And he runs into the priest and watch what the priest says to him. Evangelist friend saying the priest says to him, he tells him that your victory was not done by yourself. Your victory was not done by your cleverness. Your victory was not done by your attitude. Your victory was not done by your attitude. But your victory was simply won by God. I can't be passed out. I can't understand church folk who won't give God a praise. They have seen victories all week. I've been fighting all week long and I'm still here. Shout to your neighbor, say that's a victory. I've been going through some stuff that killed other people and made other people crazy. But I touch your mind and say, I still got my right mind. I felt like I was about to lose it, but I still got my right mind. Tell somebody, that's a victory. And yet they will still come in church, fold up their hands, shrug their shoulders. Want me to say, But the priest makes it clear. He said, you could not do this in your own strength. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, everything I've achieved in life, it wasn't by my goodness. I ain't nothing without the Lord. I've been privileged to travel, travel across seas and see the world and do things in music ministry that some of my New Jersey. And when I came from New Jersey, nobody knew me in Atlanta. But God knows how y'all don't know what I'm saying. But God knows how to orchestrate victory. God knows how to line up everything you do to give you advantage. And one thing I will always say, no matter what people say to me, man, you can play the oil. Man, you can write songs. Man, you can preach the word. I will always give the glory. I know you got your head together. 
somebody and say, he fought for me. And so, this is where the term tithing comes in. And for all those deceptious people that try to deceive you in the word of God and say we no longer have to tithe because we're no longer under the law. But here, here's an alert. This was before the law. King Mekhesedek is known to represent a type of Christ. Somebody say Christ. So this is a depiction of how grateful believers appreciative. So watch this. It's never a struggle to give a ten. Unless you're not appreciative. Watch what happens. Watch what happens, Deacon Darren. He gets back people in his life. He gets back family. Gets back uh, his brother's son gets back possession. Watch this. The tithe is indicative or representative of everything that's been trapped by the enemy will be released back to you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. This text teaches us there's significance behind tithing. There's things that we can expect outside of Malachi 3 and 10. So y'all just look at Malachi 3 and 10, you know, I'm just gonna open up a window of heaven, pour me out a blessing, different things, like, you know, different things. But Abraham begins tithing as soon as he realizes he got victory in his life. Gets victory in his life, and he says, here's a 10. Tenth, watch this. Tenth, in that time, they always gave a tenth of the best. That's right, of the best. Of the best. They didn't necessarily deal with currency like we do. That's right. So if it was a sheep, it would be the best sheep. So why, why, so why, one of the things, cause see, so I know. But some of y'all tithe, here, right? don't miss this, but some of y'all tithe, this is how y'all do. I'm going to pay this bill, I'm going to pay this bill, pay this bill, pay this bill, pay this bill. Now I'm on tithe. What? But what you have said with that attitude, you may have done it, you may have done a tithe, but what you have said with that attitude is, God, you're down this far on the list. Everything else. All this other stuff is more important. But when God is a priority, as soon as you get your money, you're like, here, yeah. now let me go pay. Right. And I let me tell you something. There's some people I can attest about. There's some people that can attest about in here that watch this. When they gave God his first, even the bills that they couldn't pay, <laughs> that God will hold the bill collector off. That stuff that should have been turned off, don't get turned off. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's how, watch this. And God will, come, watch this, God will show you, I will maintain you, and then God will show you, I'm going to get you caught up. How, how many looking, how many looking to be debt free? Come on, how many looking to be debt free? So God provides something through his kingdom. Watch this. Not, watch this, it's not just important just to do it, but it's the attitude in that you do it. Come on, ladies, talk to me. You just don't want no guy to give you flowers like here. Come on. He gave you flowers, but his attitude was stank. Come on. Come on. Right. See, right. So, I like to bring this reaction. Keep those. And that's how God be, that's how God be looking at them. Keep that. Keep that. Because it didn't come from the heart. So, without, watch this. This, is, this text is so amazing to me because Abraham didn't go to a conference to learn how to do this. He didn't get no teaching on it. 
But somehow he gets a revelation. Revelation! That because God gave me victory in my life. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Once you receive Jesus Christ, you go in this relationship with victory. What's the victory? That he saved my poor soul. Look at your neighbor say, we go in with victory. And I have eternal I, I hate to I hate to bust somebody's bubble, but uh, believers don't die. They live, they live, they live, they live. Every time Jesus, every time Jesus referred to anybody in a death state, he just said they were sleeping. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. 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 We rested yeah. in him. We, we rested in him, right? And we have each other. So we go in with victory. And so Abraham, victory I tied because of victory. Yeah. Alright? Alright. So um, there's some people that have been saved for 10 years and been struggling with tithing. Wow. And I come to curse the struggle tonight. Curse it tonight. Curse it tonight. Curse it. And show you in the word yes. we're tithing. Curse it. Oh my God. Where tithing shows up yeah. in the word of the Lord yeah. and the validity for tithing. Look at somebody say, I got to give it back to him. I got to give it back to him. I got to give it back to him. Back to him. Wow. My money. Yeah. Watch this. I want everybody to look, look up here. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You involve yourself in whatever you're interested in. Yes, you do. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. For the most part. Alright, for the most part. You do, if you want, if you're interested, you want to involve yourself in it. So the, the, the tithe is the 10, 10 percent of money, but then somewhere along in there, 10 percent of my time Amen. should be given somehow to the church. 10 percent of my time. 10% of my talent. Ask your neighbor what your gift is. What your gift is. What, come on, tell them the church, the kingdom of God needs your gift. Yeah. Come on now. See, this is, how, this is how the kingdom of God flourishes, right? Because everybody is doing it not to receive something, what? but everybody is doing it out of a giving heart because we all got what? Victory. Yeah. Victory. See, that, that, makes, that makes serving the Lord exciting when you go into an attitude, I got victory. I got victory. Serving, I'm giving time to the ministry. I'm giving my money because I got. Come on, talk, talk to yourself again and say, He gave me victory. He gave me victory. And tell you something, it don't stop right here. Come on, I'm going to see more and more victories. Everybody stand on your feet tonight. I just talk real for a second for us for us as a uh, as a ministry to go to that next level everybody everybody, everybody. <laughs> has to have that same mindset because believe it or not there's some people that have the mindset i'm just gonna come to church go home and do me that's all i do that's all i do for that's, that's just me that's just how i do church that's it that's it and god says i came to speak to you tonight because I need you to change that mindset. Change that mindset. I've given you victory. Now, what will you give me out of gratitude? Woohoo! What would I give you out of gratitude? Look at you. Ask the brother. Say, what will you give me? What will you give God? What would you give God? Out of gratitude. Out of gratitude. Just, wait, maybe you need to ask the question. Say, are you grateful? 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. On your brain, So it's going to take everybody. Yeah. Not just four people. That you to see oh, they got it. <laughs> everybody. Everybody should be able to find some place, somewhere, where they can say, you know what? Pastor Allen, Pastor Cooper, I want to do this. I want to give this back to God. Even outside of my money. That's right. The tithe is going to come together. The tithe is going to be a blessing to the kingdom because it's going to help us to do what we need to do concerning kingdom purpose. Amen. And this is a church where you don't have to worry about are they doing the wrong thing with the money. That's right. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God for that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
It's going to help us do that. And then your time is going to help us. Watch this. Because there's going to be an influx of people coming. Who's going to deal with them? I can't deal with them all. Right, right. Come on, Captain. But it's going to take all of us working together to help us deal with the influx of people that come in that need to be that need to grow in the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, man, come on. You should get 10% of your smile. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Come in the house of God with a smile. Let them see your smile. Because you could be the reason why that one person don't come back to church. Do you know? Have you ever experienced this? One person can do something and they will label a whole ministry because of one, because of, because of one, because of one crazy person. One person was being out of whole church's day. <laughs> look, look at look at your day and say, your 10% matters. Your 10% matters. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand all over the building. I want you just to receive the word tonight. I told I already have four ones. It's not be that shouting word. It might not, you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I really want you to receive it because I want people, I want people. For once in their life to make some life changes. Somebody say life changes. That means whatever this change is about to be, it's gonna be for the rest of your life. Life changes. Life changes. Change. I'm talking about visible life changes. Where God can see it and we can see it too. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, it's about that time. It's about that time. You got come on, look at say together we can do this. I ain't crazy. I can't do it by myself. I thank God for a wonderful assistant pastor, wonderful ministers and intercessors. I, I know I cannot do this. Even the level that we are, I can't do this by myself. Hallelujah. Got a wonderful administrator. Amen. Come on. I cannot do it. Come on. It takes all of us working together. And together we'll reap the benefits. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. God, I bless your name and I glorify you. I thank you for these that hold the word on tonight, that receive the word. I, God, I ask now that you would even strengthen them the more. Supernatural strength in the name of Supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. That you would touch each individual's mind to make a decision, a sober decision, to even serve you in a greater capacity. Now in the name of Jesus, God, God, speak to your people. Cause them to come to a place to be able to come and say, God, I want to serve you this way. I want to give this back to you. I want to give you more and more. God, I'm so appreciative of the sacrifice that you made with your life. God, I'm so appreciative of the things that you do for me and that you give me. This is what I want to give back to you, God. God, touch your people and cause them to come to this place in you, God. God, help us to come together to build your kingdom for your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Help us to reach souls together. Not the pastor by himself. Help us to reach souls and touch people's lives and transform people together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God for this will give you all the glory. We'll give you all the honor. Refresh your people. Revive your people with your spirit. With Holy Ghost power. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And for this will give you the glory. For this will give you the honor. And we'll give you forever all the praise. Now come on. Everybody just begin to worship the Lord all over the building. Come on. Worship the come on. Just